Hello, my sweet, shabby-loving friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, my name is Becky, and welcome to my channel. I share kinda shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations every week. And if you like those kinds of things too, then I hope you'll come back to subscribe, like, and comment. Now, it is August as I am making this video, but this is prime crafting season and I just love it. So I will be sharing lots of fall and Christmas inspirations from now through the end of the year. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the first project of the day. Now, I love that anything can be turned into a pumpkin. So that's what we're gonna do. I have a little rattan basket here. And then I have two containers. This one is from Dollar Tree. And then this one was just something that I picked up. It actually had honey in it from our farmer's market. So we're gonna go ahead and get these things painted. This one is pumpkin, moss, and cashew and we'll be using those colors to transform these objects into our pumpkins so i have some wire cutters some jute twine some sola wood flowers the little miniatures some raffia spanish moss which is a mess and some various picks here from dollar tree and I have wine corks that I like to use as my stems for my pumpkins. I also had some scrap wood out in the garage. So I painted that with that same pumpkin color and I'm just gonna embellish these as our little pumpkins as well. So let me adjust the camera angle so we can get a better view of how we're gonna embellish these little cuties. So I've chosen the corks that I want to put on our little items here. I'm just gonna put all these wine corks down first. Now because a lot of this stuff is plastic and I don't want to melt it, I'm going to turn my glue gun from high down to low and that really helps when you're working with these kind of florals you want it to stick but it won't stick if you just keep melting the edge away very cute Those are adorable. And now we're gonna finish this one up like we did this little cutie right here. Glue this on first. So I've bent that part of the leaf up and I'm gonna glue that down to the pumpkin like that. For the twine tendrils, I'm just gonna take twine. See how long I want it to fall, that looks good. And just pull it down, loop it, pull it down make a loop. And I'm going to do this about five times. And now that I have all of my loops on the ends here, I'm going to tie this off with another piece of twine. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit before I glue that on. Then I'm going to come down to the bottom here and just cut those loops. So now it's a nice little jute twine tendrils and then I'm just going to glue that down. Now I'll take the corn husk bow and I'm going to glue it on top of my little twine tendrils. We're going to glue this onto the center of our corn husk bow. Now the last thing we're going to do is glue one of our solo wood flowers to the middle of that. I think those turned out really nice. Now we need to put our swag on our lantern. I have several different picks here that I've picked up from either Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Dollar Tree. I love shabby chic colors, but I love the traditional colors of fall. Now this is the front of my lantern. So what I want to do is I'm gonna take these just like this and decide 
how I want them to lie and I think that looks good. So I'm going to take some pipe cleaners here and just pipe clean those together. And now I have a lot of excess that you can see here and I'm going to cut that excess of these stems off. Bend those down. So that's what I've got working so far. So now we're going to add a few more picks. And again, I'm just going to see where I like them. And I like those on the ends. So now I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to take additional pipe cleaners and I'm just going to attach those all together. Thankfully, pipe cleaners are pretty inexpensive at Walmart. You could also use zip ties or you could use florist wire to do this as well. And I like those there, so I'm going to attach those. Now this is going to be the base of my swag. And then after I put my bow on, then I'm going to go back in and add more of the florals. And that's what we have so far. And now that I like that, I'm going to take one more pipe cleaner, put it in the middle, give it a couple of twists, then take this and wire that on to the top of my lantern. So that's what we've got right now. Then we're going to add a shabby rag bow. And what I have done is taken 15 strips of two different types of fabric. So I have this pretty plaid here, and it's not showing up on camera, but there's actually a little gold thread in there too. And then this is almost a primitive type fabric. It has that gorgeous burnt orange with the tan check, and I picked these both up at Hobby Lobby, but I got those last fall. But they usually have the same types of fabrics year after year, so if you're interested in those, you probably will still be able to find them. So I have a total of 30 strips of fabric that was cut 30 inches long. The plaid I cut in one and a half inch wide strips, and the check I cut in one inch wide strips. And I snipped and ripped them all to give me those nice tattered edges that I love so much. So this is going to be the tails for our bow. And I'll take one strip here and just put that in the middle and tie it up. And that is going to be just gorgeous. I love that so much. I love it already. I'm not even finished with it. For the looped portion of our bow, I'm going to be using this wired burlap fabric. I'm going to take my ruler and put it inside just to make sure that they're all going to be the same. And I'm going to flip this. I want to make sure I have three loops on each side. Remove my ruler, fold it in half, and I saw Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home make this bow. She just loops that ribbon over and over and over, folds it in half, makes snips in the middle. I'm going to use some jute twine to tie mine off and pull that tightly. I'm going to add one more so then I can tie this onto my tails. We're going to fluff this up. So I've made a pleat like this in my ribbon here to put that in the middle of my burlap bow. So now that I have that all in there like that, I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. Finally satisfied with that. Burlap can be a booger to work with. I'm going to tie this to my tails. And tie this to our lantern. 
now that I have the burlap on there, I don't think I like it. Okay, friends, plan B. The burlap ribbon did not turn out how I had hoped that it would, but I did go back in. I added some more leaves and some other berries, and I think that that softened the look. Then on the back, on the pipe cleaners, I glued on some additional leaves and berries because I do want to be able to use this again. I did not glue anything to the lantern. That's what we're going to have to live with until Christmas. And y'all know sometimes crafting is like that. You think, whoa, this is going to be great. And then you make it and you go, hmm. So I'm going to clean this up and we'll be back bright eyed and bushy tailed tomorrow for some more fall crafting. All right, friends, we are on to our last project of the episode. And I just want to say, after having slept on it and I look at that lantern now, I'm okay with it. I was just a little concerned because it didn't come out the way I thought it would in my head. You know, it looked different. But Mr. Shabby saw it and he said, wow, that is beautiful. So he's my number one fan and i appreciate that he thinks it's pretty so that is good enough for me so now moving on to our very last project we are going to be updating this frame and you can see it is just a nice thick wooden heavy frame but it's just a little plain and i picked this up at goodwill we are going to be using our air dry clay and the iron orchid designs mold in the design classic elements. Then once all of that is drying, we are going to replace this, even though I love the dogwoods, and I'm not gonna throw that away, I'm gonna save that. Look how cute. We're gonna put that pumpkin printable in there, and I will link her website to you. It was a little difficult trying to use either the iPad or the iPhone. So if you have access to a laptop, I would suggest using your laptop. So we are also going to be replacing this mat, and I haven't decided yet if I am going to use scrapbooking papers out of the Thankful Heart collection or the Pumpkin Spice collection. And I picked these up at Michael's when they were on sale. So of course, I'm going to adjust the camera angle and bring you in closer so you can see how all of this is going to transpire. So I'll move all of this out of the way so we can get this project started. First up, we're gonna disassemble this frame. So I am going to just take my X-Acto blade and very gently just cut this back paper loose. And when I peel this back, it's just a bunch of nails holding in some cardboard. I'm just gonna remove all of these nails. Now I'm gonna take a screwdriver and see what's up underneath here. Aren't y'all curious? Anytime you get one of these old frames, I'm always curious. Oh my goodness. It says 1949, one of a set of six. I love finding stuff like this. I don't know who D. Henry is, but isn't that such a pretty little picture? I'm gonna save our mat because that is going to be our template on this side when we put our scrapbooking paper down. Remove the glass, and I'm gonna go set that aside so it doesn't accidentally get broken. It is my intention to use this beaded trim right here and place it all along the edges of our picture frame here just to give it a little bit of interest because it's just so plain. So first up, we're going to dust the element that we want to use with some cornstarch. And I'm gonna tap out the excess because that is gonna help our clay release more easily from the mold. And I'm using the DOS clay. And I have made so many things with this clay. If you haven't seen these embellished pumpkins that I did with the clay, I will link that tutorial below. I've barely even used any of it. So even though it is a little pricey, you only use so little of it when you're doing your projects. Pull out a section. I'm gonna roll out my clay to fit that area. 
I remove my excess, come back over the top with my Bondo spreader. There we go. Roll it over and release the design. That's awesome. I'm going to turn it over, squeeze out a tiny bit of the tight bond glue, use a different brush to smooth that glue out. Make sure it's even. And that's what we have so far. And I am going to just keep making these elements out of this mold and placing them all around my picture frame. I'm loving that. That is going to be so pretty when we get that painted and get some wax on there to bring out all of those details. Let me get this cleaned up and we will remat our frame with our cute little pumpkin printable. I have decided on the paper. Look at that beautiful, muted, soft, sagey green. Isn't that just going to be gorgeous with that? Just bringing out the green in the little vine there with the pumpkin. I love it. And that is from the Thankful Heart Collection at Michael's. I did buy this last fall, but I'm sure that you would be able to find something with this green plaid online. And I think two and a quarter inches in is going to be good enough to frame this out. I'm just going to lay them out to see how I like the design. So now that I've moved the papers around, they aren't going to match up and I'm okay with that. So I'm going to remove these top portions here. So for the sides, take that up, run some double-sided tape, line it all the way up against the edge, press that down. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Run some double-sided tape. Then you can see I can still slip this in and I can adjust it. Just make a little mark on the fingernail here and then I can trim that off. Oh, I love that already. Now I'm just going to go back in to secure these edges. That is just going to be so pretty in that picture frame. I painted the frame in the Waverly chalk paint color plaster. So now we are going to be applying our clear wax followed by our antiquing wax. And I have three brushes here. I start in with the clear wax. I go over the details with the antiquing wax with a smaller brush, and then I come back in with some clear wax just to blend all of that out. We're just going to get some clear wax on here. I'm going to pour just a little bit in my lid here, dip my bristles in, work that into our bristles, and then we're going to rub it all over the frame. And so I'm just going to keep doing this over the rest of the frame. I'm going to go back with my lint-free rag and just wipe away that excess. Now I'm going to take my smaller brush and we are going to apply our antiquing wax. Wipe off most of that from my brush and we're going to go all in these areas here. So when we do that, that looks a little nasty. But when we come back over it with our rag and we begin to wipe away that excess, then we're left with that wax, the dark wax, in the recesses of our beaded design here. And that is just beautiful. And I do work in small sections. Now I'm going to come back with my blending brush and dip into the clear wax again, offload that onto some paper toweling. Now when I go in with that, you can see it starts to lift up some of the excess of that dark wax. And when we go back over it with our rag again, then it has just a nice aged look. Whoops, 
that came unglued. Obviously I didn't put enough glue down right there. And you can see the difference between this side and this side. So I'm just going to continue working in small sections. And if you like it dark like that, you most certainly can leave it just like that. You do to your taste however you prefer yours to look. I'm going to go back in with the blending brush, clear wax, and remove some of that excess. I'm going to wipe back the excess. I am so satisfied with how that came out. Now all I need to do is get some staged photos and we are ready to see the final result. I am so grateful that you take time out of your day to watch my videos or to leave me a sweet comment. I truly appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed today's projects and will actually create a few of these for yourself. Come back next week for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until then my friends, be blessed.